I'm John Kaiser at the uh, Metals Investor Forum in Vancouver, Friday, November 10. I am here with Dave Lenigas, Chairman of Artemis Resources. Dave, welcome to Vancouver. Yeah, no, hi John. I used to live here, so I like this town. Great. Um, last night, through the Australian Stock Exchange, you put out news of acquiring 70% interest in a significant land position in the Pilbara to the southwest of Comet Well and Purdy's reward. The Elysian um, ground, yeah. Yes. This changes the dynamic of you as a 50% partner with Novo on all the uh, Artemis JV land. It puts you in charge. What? How did this much desired uh, piece of land, a lot of speculation, but how did you end up being the company to acquire this? We've been negotiating with the, um, with the people who own the Elysian ground for quite some time, probably four or five months. And, um, and it was more the nuances of how the leases would be formulated within the Artemis package so we could use our native title agreements that already exist so that when we did the deal, we could fast track them into the native title so we could get the expiration licenses applications granted. So that system took quite a while to organise. And now that the deal's done, we'd like to have the whole native title issue wrapped up and the expiration licenses applications granted within the next month or two so we can start proper expiration. Now, one of the big issues with the uh, Pilbara conglomerate gold, because of the significant nugget effect, is how do you cost effectively and reliably measure large tonnages and grade for this system. Purdy's reward is, in a sense, the workshop, an R&D workshop, where, where Novo is working out the protocols as to how to best do that. But because you are now in a position to go to work immediately because you have all these clearances and full title at the Elysium ground, what would be your approach to uh, exploring and defining a conglomerate uh, uh, resource in that land package? Right. It's two aspects. You've got the Elysian ground and you've got the money, money ground because the money, money ground is the extension of the, you know, Purdy's Comet well right through Wandu up into money, money. And that's already approved mining leases. And we have a whole heap of core and drill chips that were drilled through the conglomerates, you know, when they were drilling for the, for the, um, for the platinum deposit, the largest in Australia. Just going through with my geologists, and I think we might do approach things differently to the way Novo are. And very much, I totally support what Novo are doing. That's why we brought them in happily as joint venture partners because of all their Beaton's Creek experience. But we have a hungry plant that we're refurbishing at the moment, which is five, six kilometres up the road called Radio Hill, which we would like to have refurbished with a gold circuit by June, July next year. So the way we're going to be exploring is and from my mining engineering experience, it's almost grade control drilling. So we know we've got conglomerate with gold coming through into the Elysian ground, and we've got some very high grade gold outcropping through shear zones up at Silica Hills. So effectively what we'll be looking at is fast, big diameter, six, eight inch RC and close space drilling, 50 meter holes drilled on 10 meter or 12 meter line centers, close space drilling so we could actually block it out because our priority is where do we get the tonnage from to put through that plant which we have, which we're planning to fast track and get back into production at 500,000 tons a year by July. Now another big issue is what is going to be the average grade of this stuff and we had that fantastic uh, 542 kilo sample that yielded over two ounces per ton gold but that's one pinpoint along a ribbon of daylighting uh, conglomerate bed. Uh, I understand you've got seven trenches opened, more, more now, underway. More now, yeah. And, and you've got at least 30 drums of you know, half ton to full ton uh, material that will be processed uh, at Nagra. Well, no, Novo's handling all that. Yes. They're part of their deal on farming in, yeah. And the market really wants to see what the distribution of grades would be from, say, several dozen of these samples, even though they are basically just a two-dimensional portrait of the conglomerate beds. Any sense of the timing on getting those results? Uh, I'm waiting just like the market is. So uh, I've got no idea of timing except for what Novo said. I think you know, Quentin said that he would like to have some results out in the next couple of months. 
it's quite a complicated process and what they're going through on how they want to get grade tonnage distribution. So we're, I'm waiting just like everybody else. Mm-hmm. No idea. A, a couple of weeks ago, there was a su- market was caught by surprise by the appointment of Sheikh Maktoum Al Hasher to the board of Artemis. Yep. Surprised because we're still fairly early days in a project that we don't know if this will be just a big giant geochemical gold anomaly or perhaps something order of magnitude bigger and better than the WITS itself. What prompted the Sheikh to join at this stage rather than wait a few months to see if this is indeed the incredible discovery that some of us think it is? A lot of people are saying, well, you know, magicked up this, you know, figurehead figure to go and join the board of, um, of Artemis. And, and in reality, you know, there's been discussions going on with, with the Sheikh for, for many months. Um, you know, he represents, not represents, but I mean, a lot of our register of Artemis actually is in the Middle East, some of them in Dubai. And we've been working with him and, in fact, his very sophisticated mining team, some of which are very big South African VIT specialists. Um, and he has a big passion for mining. And I needed to get the corporate governance issues right up to scratch. I needed to get the company well funded. His main interest in where we were going was in our copper cobalt gold projects up at Carlo Castle. I mean, he's a, he really passionate about cobalt and copper. And this whole gold play still has started coming into play. So this has taken some months to organise. And from my perspective, when I did the last institutional financing, I felt comfortable that I could bring someone on of his calibre onto the board and not embarrass him as we went forward. Now, he's not a figurehead director. There's been many, many discussions that as this play grows, and we know that Novo is going to spend a lot of money on our ground. And I need to be able to keep up with the funding to make sure that we keep our 50-50% in this you know, long-term marriage in order. And for that to happen, it's about technical relationships, but also financial. And Sheikh Maktoum Hasha has huge global experience from you know, Boston to New York to London to the Middle East to Europe on big structural financing deals. And I'm going to need someone of his caliber to help me while the rest of my board manage the technical issues on a corporate sense, make sure that we're well capitalized. And let's assume that this thing goes through that journey and we're building a billion dollar project. I've got to come up with half a billion dollars on my side, whether it's equity, debt or a combination of. And to have someone of his caliber on the board assisting me and the board makes life a lot easier. And it also says to the marketplace, don't think that you're going to take us out too easy, guys. Yes, and of course, uh, the Elysian uh, acquisition where you have 70%, uh, that is really critical. You define the budget now. You drive the uh, program. And and if you want to spend $100 million, they know that whoever is going to give it to you understands that you are in charge of its spending. You're not just being cash called by another operator. Yeah, no, I don't want to be seen as the daughter of Novo. I mean, my job here in North America this week and next week, now we've come up the value learning curve and I'm restricted by a lot about what I can say under the ASX listing rules compared to what Novo can say in their jurisdiction. I understand the TSXV because I'm also chairman of um, LGC Capital on the TSXV, so I understand the rules. Um, My job is to bridge the gap in perceived value between Artemis and my partners. You know, right now, a lot of the work is happening on my assets, Artemis's assets. And you've got the disparity between the US, I want to buy the dream, and the Australian stock market reality of, I want to buy the give me the facts. And things are starting to happen now, and people are starting to understand that there is something of potential significance here. We've got a long journey ahead and there's going to be lots of road bumps along the way. But there's a lot of empiric evidence now popping up that this could be a very big regional play. Dave, it's been a pleasure chatting with you here in Vancouver at the Metals Investor Forum. I think things are looking up for Artemis. Thank you very much.